Hey, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to another outing of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. For those who've been following the series, I'm going through and replaying the Deadlock campaigns of Season 1, of which there's Deadlock and the Parallel DLC that runs around it. That's called Broken Alliance. Now, Broken Alliance enhances this with additional storyline, new units, and the like. But also, the Sin and Sacrifice campaign that was released at the end of season one also gives it an added bit of flavor as well with veterancy and radio chatter uh, and some new units so with this in mind i thought i'd go back and revisit it we're going to hear a little bit of story this is mission nine of the deadlock broken alliance campaign which is um a great campaign you've got to protect all this nuclear material fantastic stuff and there's a bit of subterfuge going on as well. And it's a really good battle at the end, so I hope you like it. So let's have a little bit of story and see how we go. The nuclear tests are a public declaration by Cylon standards. And the message is simple. They have thermonuclear warheads. Colonial Fleet was days away from being dismantled by the intercolonial courts. Now, on the back of a nuclear threat, Kane has the ear of every single seat in the quorum. Vergon has provided a large quantity of nuclear material to Colonial Fleet, on the condition that no one asks why they hadn't disposed of it yet. Our orders are to escort it to the labs at Aquaria and, whether we like it or not, restart their nuclear program. This is serious, Commander. We screw this up, the Cylons have the means to wipe out the entire 12 colonies without any chance of retaliation. So here we go, chapter nine, permissive action. Um, permissive action link, and it's around Aquaria. So we've got our fleet in position. I'm still rocking up some heavy battle stars, Artemis class battle stars, and an adamant. Now, we know with the Artemis class battle stars, single missile, two fighter squadrons. The adamant, you know, it's a frigate. It's not really, a, it's not a battle star, it's a frigate. It's got a squadron, and I've got Raptors assigned to this. And also it's got the ability to shoot missiles. But good guns on the side batteries as well. So let's get cracking. Let's get into it. Three, two, We're jumping in. One. Here are the battle stars. There's the adamant. And Daedalus will follow shortly. Cylon Dreda's contacts already present at the landing zone, Commander. Freighters 1 and 2 are both accounted for. We need to clear the blockade so the Vergon pilots can make atmospheric entry. So there you heard it from Helena Agathon. We're here to perfect those freighters that are carrying nuclear material from the Cylons. And the Cylons, and there's quite a few of them. This is going to be one of these massive Battlestar Galactica epic battles. Um, a huge battle. This is what this is going to be. I don't think there's going to be any base stars there. We're a bit too early in the game. Um, however, there's going to be some Revenants. There's going to be some of those um, Phobos class ships, no doubt. And they can be a right pain in the frack. Let's put it that way. All right. So, first off, we're going to start launching all our planes. We're going to get all our planes in the air. Once we've got our planes in the air, and we've launched also the squadrons from the Daedalus as well. And, and I'm rocking around with Mark I Vipers, strictly for the numbers. Now, we've said this before in other videos, the Mark I Vipers are a mainstay, but they are old. But you do get a lot of them in a squadron. They don't do as much damage. 0.3 on the damage scale. Whereas with the Mark II Vipers, the newer Vipers that you can unlock throughout the game, you get more damage. 0.4 damage, right? But you don't get as many in a squadron. And, you know... I, I'm I'm in a balance as to where to go with this, to be perfectly honest. I don't really know. I'd like to be able to put Mark II Vipers everywhere. But so far, no dice. We're going to go with the Mark ones. But see, I've also got an Assault Raptor Squadron, and I've also got a Raptor Squadron as well, as you can see as they start to come on the board. The Raptor Squadron assigned to my Adamant, and then I've got an Artemis then with an Assault Raptor Squadron as well. Two entities to arm. Commander. Has it not occurred to you that the concept of nuclear testing was manufactured solely to inspire this very... Bit of talky-talky from the Cylon involved. Rotten hell, robot. By your command. Rotten hell, robot. By your command. Can we get a few so yours as well? What do you think? Stick it in the comments. Are you enjoying Battlestar Galactica Deadlock? Is it a game 
you know, that you think is true to the TV series. Personally, I think it is. I think it's great. Having some good fun over this, and it's a completely change from the sort of games I've been playing lately. But then again, I played Command and Conquer back in back in the early 90s, and, and that was a good stuff. All that's being remade as well. Anyway, back to Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. So, we've got our battle stars deploying. We've started to move our transport, carrying that nuclear material that we have to defend, the Virgon nuclear freighters. Um, we moved them out of the way, and we've got some fighter squadrons in defense of those. We're going to use some of the Daedalus squadrons in defense of those particular nuclear transports. Whereas we've got a squadron as well defending each of the battle stars, and then another squadron as well then which will engage any Cylon Raiders that come our way. Understood. Now I think Slytherin and Black Lab Games are done a fantastic job of this. It really is turning into a polished RTS military war game experience. It really is. So okay we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Cylon marks on the Dredus on the screen. Nothing has revealed itself as yet. But that doesn't mean to say they're not there. And we can see them because the Cylon marks are right in front of us. So we're going to have to get pretty damn close now to start engaging. Which means they have the choice of deploying their missiles and attacking first during the next rotation or the next round. So here we go. We're moving a bit forward. There we go. We've got an Arachne. That's just got itself in the way it's turning it's taking a big pounding from the big door knocker guns of the of the artemis battle star another arachne as well has turned around and revealed itself got some revenants i reckon as well in place now these revenants as you can see that have been revealed right we're gonna lash them with the battle star guns really lash them lay some fire down as well Get some of our fighters in there. Use the Raptors missiles as well. Now the Assault Raptor can also paint a target. Now when you paint a target with the Assault Raptor, what this means is, is that every, every friendly ship that targets that ship will get an added attack bonus. And that's worthwhile. Especially on some of the bigger ships as well, like the base stars and things. So get your Assault Raptors in there, paint the target, Fire some short-range rockets off as well when it's in there. They're used as those short-range rockets in the Assault Raptor. They can be used as, um, you know, capital ship destroyers, really dealing loads of damage at a short range as well. Yes, Plus, you've got the bonuses from the other allied ships in yes, the area sir. that will go in there and use that additional bonus from painting that target. Now over to the left hand side as well, again we've got some revenants off there, so those battles, battle stars, those Artemis class battle stars are going to start having a good go with those. We're just going to change our viewing angle down a bit so we can see some of the action going on. That one revenant over on the right hand side is taking a right hole pasting, hull down to 44. We've gone through his armour plating and so far we've had minimal casualties, I'll say, on the colonial fleet. Still a few Cylon marks that haven't revealed themselves yet we got our vipers in defense vipers are engaging the, the cylon fleet as well quite well and we've got our adamant frigate as well right in the middle who's going to lay down some of its side power and side guns on the cylon fleet okay just make sure we've got all our targeting arcs in place Still making minor adjustments to those freighters, getting them out of harm's way. Very careful not to get caught up in that asteroid field. And that would be really embarrassing to engage the fleet, holding them off at a distance. And then those Virgon nuclear freighters are then held off in that asteroid field, but prone to collisions with an asteroid. And that's the last thing you want, because that's just really embarrassing. Same as having your ships collide with one, one another and not getting your elevations right. Battlestar Galactica deadlock. Is exactly like this and it's very important to think three-dimensionally not just left and right you've got to think about the up and down as well right you know and also that will also talk about things like um, missiles uh, and torpedoes that can be fired as well now I tend to use guided missiles could fire and forget off they go torpedoes you do get a wider spread and you get more missiles okay but it is a little bit more difficult should we say to secure a hit unless you're at close range and you've got your elevations right. Okay, so we're continuing now, making sure the turrets are uh, looking locked onto that Arachne. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Yes, Commander. All the transports are, are well out of the way. There's a missile salvo going in there, but we have got Viper squadrons in defense, which is a result of this. They'll intercept any fighters, I and mean, there's, there's Cylon Raiders in pursuit, and also take out missiles. Now, how many missiles depends how far it is between them being fired and obviously where you are, so the Vipers have got time to take them down. So we've got an Artemis class Battlestar, the second one in our Battlestar list is taking a bit of damage. I think that's probably going to be prone to be lost. The first, first of our casualties has to be said. The other two have taken out that one Revenant as well. That's great. We're going to swing around, mop up any of the fighters with our Viper squadrons. So those Cylons will be out of the way. And then we'll be off to engage the other Cylons on the left-hand side of the screen with the Adamant and the Artemis class ships. Bringing in the other two Artemis class battle stars in reserve as well to swing around and, and take them from behind. Artemis is taking damage. So that Viper Squadron is in there, it's doing its damage. We're wearing down the Cylons. That's great, all good stuff. That Artemis, yeah, I knew it would go, and it's gone. Um, it took a right old pounding from three, three Cylon capital ships there. You know, it was always gonna lose, so we're gonna, just gonna try and angle that Adamant there just to get its guns on the go and turrets. We're gonna target the Revenant, because its hull plating is virtually gone. We're going to fire some missiles just to ensure it. And then we're going to start from a distance now, engaging some of the others from a distance with our missile batteries and guns. Get the big guns of the big battle stars out there engaging that Cylon force. Understood. Of course, some of the, a lot of these battle stars have got a good level of veterancy. And then one of the previous missions, we yes, did sir. take a good pasting, even though we were victorious. So, you know, I mean, the veterancy adds an added dimension to this game, and it was brought in with sin and sacrifice. However, right, you know, it's totally evident when you've got a load of ships that have got no veterancy to ships that have. And it works for the Cylons as well, right? So if the longer the Cylons are there or in occupation of a particular planet, they're gaining experience. So when you move in and you want to try and take them out finally, whether that be with the Daedalus battle group, the Battlestar Galactica battle group, depending on how you're playing, or an officer-led battle group, then all these additions and subtractions come into play. Okay, so far so good. We are taking, well, we're taking the fight to them. They are getting a right or battering. There's some missiles coming in, but I think we can still risk a little bit of flak. Just making sure I've got everything in. I'm not going to crash into anybody. I have to go and check on those, on those transports as well. Understood. That Cylon's gone, definitely. There's a few hanging about, but the guns from the Battle Stars will take those out, as opposed to wasting a missile salvo um, on ships where I don't really need it. Whereas, you know, within the turn, the guns will automatically, from the Battle Stars, target the nearest hostile entity in this case that particular Revenant, and then take it out. So the Flak's doing a good job of blocking any missiles over there. So is our Viper Squadron on the, the left-hand side of that one particular Artemis. That Revenant is virtually gone. It's going to go now any moment. Leaving two Revenants in that particular area. Our two Artemis classes coming in from the right-hand side yes, to engage man. them as they turn. We've got them in probably what is called the pincer movement. The Ricardo Manoeuvre, we're going to call it. Okay, we've got a few systems offline. Got to work on that hangar. Hull plating on the right is virtually gone. Wearing down on the left. Understood. We're going to try and paint a target. No, we'll recall. We'll get that back in, get it rearmed. And get on out there. I mean, the Raptors are really good as well for going boarding ships, making, you know, degrading their systems as well with Marines. Just to keep them occupied and keep them out of the way. If you've got a large force there, then get send the Marines in via a Raptor force. A very good tactic. So the Virgon freighters, the nuclear freighters are still in play. 
which is great. They haven't crashed into any rocks yet. We've still got their Viper screen in defense, but to be fair, the Cylon force we've got in that particular area, they're more concerned with engaging my Battlestar group. And of course, the Adamant. So we have lost one Artemis, but their squadrons are still in play as well. So their squadrons can be all out now, engaged to attack any ship. They'll just start, you know, wearing it down, whittling away at the armor, in an engagement model with those Vipers. And then we'll get the Raptors out as well and get the Raptors to deploy their rockets and their short range missiles, paint some targets, missiles and we'll be, way. I think, I'm confident of completing this. Providing I don't hit anything, with those yep, nuclear yep. freighters, our losses, we may lose one or two more ships, I think, you know, at a push, but I think we've pretty much got it. We've got it in play. So just relaunching. Uh, all good stuff. So there you go, fire some rockets. We've got four rockets. We're going to fire directly at it. Give it a little bit of an extra punch, a little bit of an extra boost. They're trying to hack the battle stars as well. Of course, I can also send a raptor over to shore that up. The sensor suite on the raptors uh, are very good at sort of like boosting a particular battle stars firewalls if it's been starting to be compromised yeah i'm quite confident that we're gonna we're gonna win this we're in with a chance at least providing nothing else jumps in we're we're in good shape okay we're using some of those leftover fighters from that that doomed artemis battle star the Arachne there, it's, it's dishing up the damage, only 33 hell left, so I feel confident that's going to go probably this, this turn or not. This navigation is virtually gone, the hangar is gone, we need to get that ship moving. Fortunately, we can still fire, so we can use it as a missile platform and move it off to one side while we effect repairs on the navigation systems, so it can still lay down some rocket fire. And that's a second Artemis now destroyed. Well, I did say we'd lose perhaps another ship, and that's the case. A huge Cylon force, though. And those Revenant and Arachne ships, they're horrible ships to engage. They're really dangerous. They can really lay down an awful lot of fire, and they can take a pounding. In fact, I've said in, in videos before, I'd much rather engage base stars as opposed to engaging the Arachne and, and, and the Revenants, because... They're just multiple, they can lay down loads of fire, um, and they can take quite a lot of punishment. So, we got a Cylon Nemesis ship heading down towards the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Yes, Commander. Now, what I'm going to do there, I'm going to send some Vipers in pursuit of that to try and keep wittering that away around. I'm still going to concentrate on the remaining Cylon capital ships there, even though I've lost another Artemis Battlestar. And as a result of that, you know, I'm going to use the long-range missiles, the guided missiles, to try and take it out. The Cylon um, Raiders, probably, there's not many of them left, right? And I'm confident, providing he doesn't come round the bottom of, of the screen to attack those ships. And saying, I've got my Viper squadrons in attack and they're wearing him down time after time after time um the transport should be okay because they're over on the right hand side of the screen and i'm moving them towards the top of the screen whereas there you go i'm moving to the top of the screen now um out of the way because he's coming round from the bottom so vipers are in pursuit there we're gonna as soon as we can we're gonna use some missiles as well from the battle stars to try and take them out Also, we can use the turrets on the Daedalus as well. If it comes within range, we can give it a bit of a lashing with the turrets as well. You would have thought the Daedalus battle station would have at least one volley of missiles yes, in defense, would you? Or the ability to engage flak. You know, as a station and a shipyard, turrets and two squadrons, not very good, is it, really? Yes, Commander. Okay, so we're using the boost thrusters function on these ships to get ourselves into pursuit and into range we've also fired off a volley of missiles towards that last remaining Cylon nemesis 
Navigation, we've got to get that sorted out. Understood. But uh, a frigate and a battle star in hot pursuit of that nemesis, you know, I'm confident that we're going to see it off. So the Vipers are closing. Still got quite a lot of hell, that Nemesis. But now once the Vipers get close and those missiles also impact it and wear down some of the hull plating, then, you know, that's going to be great. Let's get the turrets of the Daedalus focused on that Nemesis. If it comes close, let it have it. Not long to go now. Here comes that volley of missiles. Guided missiles, they're firing off. Will our Viper squadron manage to intercept those missiles or will they hit? It's only a few missiles as well. No, don't hit that transport. Move them. Move out the way. Not the most agile of things, these, these freighters, and the fact they're carrying nu nuclear armaments or nuclear material, you know. Um, and that begs the question, how did the Virgon colony have nuclear material if there was an armistice? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? So, now the fact that we've got them, that means the Cylons are going to have them. Dratus is clean. Freighters 1 and 2 are... And there you have it. Set. So, Nemesis gone. Is Everything's clear. At every juncture, the, Cylon the Cylons now saying, right, well, you know, it's a proportionate response. Build your ships and your guns, you build your ships and, you respond in and your guns, now you and they respond. So now we've got nuclears. They'll respond in time. It's an armed Same race. Area. There you go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look in the cinematic mode. And as a result of this, we'll see that huge battle with those seven Cylon um, ship fleet engage the colonial fleet and then see how it goes. All the toing and froing about using nuclear weapons. So let's take a look at that and come back afterwards and see what it's all about. Now, if you haven't done so, do me a favor. A like and a subscribe goes a hell of a long way on YouTube these days. And there's a huge back catalog of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock and other games on the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to leave you with the cinematics. Enjoy it. It was a huge, vast Battlestar Galactica battle. Um, check back for more videos in the series.
Wisconsin now. Reaching bingo fuel. Clean up order received. Rally up. No toaster's gonna do me like that. Not today. That's right, Frackers. That's right. <laughs> 